I was, uh, I almost got lost in the park. I thought I would be late, but I made it. And yes, I'm glad this didn't start without me. All right, I'll be talking about scale lasagna modules. which are some proposal for extending Hovano homology to three manifolds. So let me first say a few words about Hovano homology. If we have a link in S3, then there's this uh, bi-graded theory uh, whose Euler characteristic is um, Q plus Q inverse times the Jones polynomial of the link. And, um, well, it's very similar to Fleur homology in many ways. So it's functorial under cobordisms. I have some um, some surface in, uh, let's say, R3 times I between two links. Then I get a map between the Hovano homologies. There's some ambiguity in science, but it can be fixed. Um, and so this is similar to not Fleur homology. And it also has, it's also related to Fleur homologies by spectral sequences. So uh, Peter and Tom show that there's a spectral sequence from Hovano homology to the instanton Fleur homology of, of the knot, and Dowling showed that there's a spectral sequence from Havana homology to knot Fleur homology. Right, so now uh, an important problem is to see if we can extend this theory to knots in some other three manifolds rather than um, R3. And, well, just like not Fleur homology works for, uh, for other three null homologous knots in three manifolds. So there are different approaches um, to doing this. Um, there's the, maybe the best known one is categorification at roots of unity. Work of Hovanov and Sasson and Elias and Chi and other people. Um, there's approaches from physics um, due to Witten and um, Gukov, Pei, Futurov, Waffa, um, and others. But the thing that I want to talk about today is the third one, which, is, which are these Kane lasagna modules. And well, to motivate them, let me first um, explain the analog um, in at the decategorified level. So you can ask for the Jones polynomial. So how how do we extend Jones polynomial of um, link to links in other three manifolds? Well, um, Categorification at roots of unity has been done for these polynomials and the result, I'm sorry, without categorification, just looking at the roots of unity and taking cables of, of the link, you can get um, the Witten ratio ticking to rise um, invariance of three manifolds. So that's um, the usual way. But there's also a simpler way, which is the scheme module. And, well, what is that? It's, it has a purely formal definition. So, the Jones polynomial in, um, in R3 can be defined in terms of the Kaufman bracket. So it's minus A to the third times minus of the rise, the Kaufman bracket of the link Oh, with some change of variables, where the Kaufman bracket is just, um, it's some invariant of, let, let's think of this as a framed link, so that 
uh, or a diagram of, of the link, and then you define an invariant of, um, of these diagrams by these chain relations. Okay, and that's the Jones polynomial, and uh, these relations completely determine the polynomial. Sorry? Oh yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, so you can, so now in, a, in an arbitrary three manifold, uh, well, you can, so Brzezinski, and to arrive, uh, define this chain module, the Kaufman bracket chain module of Y, to be the space of all framed links in Y, modulo the same relations. So, yes, in, in R3, it's easy to show that this did determine a polynomial. In general, well, you can make a vector space. Um, or a module over GAA inverse, and just define this and see what happens. So, um, right, so then if you have a link, then of course you get some element in this chain module. So for example, for S3, it's just GAA inverse, and that's why the Jones polynomial is, is a polynomial, is a Laurent polynomial. Uh, but yeah, but in general, where does your invariant live? It lives in this chain module, which is easy to define, but things that are easy to define are hard to compute. So for, well, this, this started like around 1990, and for the last 30 years, this was kind of going under the radar, and people were computing it for various things, um, lens spaces, and so on. Uh, but it turns out to be, um, to have an interesting interpretation. So recently, Gunningham, Jordan, and Safronov, in 2019, showed that KBSM is finite dimensional over, let's say, the field of fractions in A. So this is non-trivial. I mean, uh, you know, if you make a definition like this, you might get something infinite dimensional that's completely uh, uncomputable. But, um, well, it turns out to be finite dimensional. In fact, you can say what it is. So there's some work in progress. They announced it at some conferences by Gunningham and Safronov. Um, proving some conjecture of various people that the scheme module, again, once you tensor with this field of rational fractions, is the equivariant SL2C Fleur homology of Y, again, over the same field of fractions. So this is some version of uh, what I defined with Mohammed Abu Zaid a few years ago. It's not quite the one in our paper. It's equivariant and just a degree zero part. But you can think of it as roughly as, as a count of representations from pi one of y to SL2C. So, yeah, so even though it looks like um, you know, some formal definition that's maybe um, just some complicated thing. It turns out to be related to representations from um, the fundamental group to SL2C. All right, so. Um, Great, so this is for the Jones polynomial. So again, there's a formal definition and then there's some mathematics that allows you to compute it. Uh, so now what can we do at the categorified level?
Pardon? Oh no no no! This is uh, this is the place where the invariant, uh, the decategorifying invariant takes values. So right. So so a polynomial is an element of this module, and the generalization still decategorified is an element of this uh, of this vector space. Yeah. No no no! This is a deep theorem. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, um, I don't know if you know about the A polynomial of a knot that's also related to representations to SL2C, so it's kind of along the same lines. Yeah, and also like if you if you know about Witten's proposal for uh, uh, for John Jones polynomial and one of homology that has to do with with SL2C, well, coupled in Witten equations, but in the limit. It's like flat SL2C connections. So kind of the set of values is, um, yeah, I don't know. Presumably, it's related to that. OK, so for Havana homology, you try to do the same thing, but you, you, you define something formal where you divide by the local relations in Havana homology. So what does this mean? So this is the skin lasagna module. This were defined by. Morrison, Walker, and Vedwig, 2019. Um, and there are invariants of some link inside the three manifold Y, but you also have to specify some four manifold with boundary Y. So the link is in del of W, which is Y, and it's framed. Everything is actually framed. So the skin lasagna module, call it SWL, is the free abelian group on lasagna fillings, modulo some equivalence relation. What's lasagna filling? Um, Let me draw one. So this is W, this is the link, this is Y. Uh, you have some interior balls. D1, D2, D3. So these are four dimensional balls. You have some links on their boundaries. L1, L2, L3, and so on. And you have some cobordism from these links to L, other component. This is a surface. And you also have some elements, V1, V2, V3. So VI are elements in the Hovano homology of LI. Right, so basically instead of uh, uh, links, now we have these uh, surfaces. Okay, yes, I'll get to that at the end. Yes, so it should be in the chain complex, but uh, we don't know how to do that in the moment. So it's only an approximation to the truth for now. Yes. Doesn't it look like one? <laughs> Here are some more sheets of the lasagna. If you, the link has several <laughs> components. OK, I'm not an expert. Okay, is Paul Seidel here? Okay, um, that's true, that's true. Yes, anyway, it's due to them, the name. Yes. <laughs> um, no, there are many.
There's nobody telling me that lasagna is lasagna in Italian? Even if it's, no, even if it's more, if I have a noun that's a modifier, it has to be in the singular. It's lasagna filling. Okay, anyway, so these are, these are the generators. Let, let's do some math. Um, the, the equivalence relation is given by, well, uh, okay, so you want it to be multilinear in the, in the VI. And, um, okay, well, isotopy of the boundary. But more importantly, you can fill in one of the balls. So you can replace ball with um, okay, so maybe you have a, one of these things, like L1 here, and you're going to replace it with another subfilling with some other links here, like Li and Lj, and some surface sigma i, and you have Vi, Vj, but now you also have a V1 here. I mean, maybe you have more things. And now you want, I mean, Havana homology has to come in at some point. So the map induced by this surface applied to Vi tensor, Vj tensor, I don't know, if you have more things, it should give us V1. Okay, so basically you're dividing by local relations in Kovan homology, meaning uh, cobordism uh, relations of this form. All right, there is something slightly uh, interesting here. So this, word, this is in S3 minus some balls, and you want to make sure that Kovan homology is functorial under this. So Morrison, Walker, and Webb, Vedrich, when they defined this, they had to prove uh, like functoriality of Kovanov in S3 times I rather than R3 times I. And this required checking one extra move from the usual um, functoriality of Kovanov homology. <coughs> OK, um, so the most important example is that S of B4 and L is just Havana homology. So this is an extension of the usual theory. Um, yeah. So, well, why is this true? Basically, if I have, if my four manifold is a ball, and I have the link here, and I have these other balls and this sigma, well, I can always, do we have colored chalk? Yeah. I can use this relation and replace and make like a large ball here, and just replace this. Um, well, instead of having V1 and V2 here, I'm looking at the map induced by this cobordism, and I, and I get an element here. And this gives me um, something in, um, um, well, in, I get an actual element V in the, in, um, in the Kovana homology of this link to L, because I can use the, um, yeah, because I, I can use the cobord as a map inside B4. All right, so, well, you can write down this formal definition of an extension of a one of homology to any three manifolds relative to some four manifold. And you can do various things. So, for example, uh, I mean, you can also do it for um, kovanov rosansky homology. And this is just a degree. Yeah, you can extend it to something called blob homology. We won't get into that. Let me, all, oh, yeah. Um, let me say the main thing. The, this also has the advantage that functoriality is automatic. So if I have a um, cobordism, if I have, well, first of all, W and Y, 
and I have a link, let's say y0 and l0, and I have a surface sigma, I have a cobordism to some other link l1 in here, then I get a map, let's call it psi of, um, um, yeah, I mean, this can be something, let's call it z, so psi of z and sigma, it would go from the skein module, sorry, the skein lasagna module of w um, relative to L0 to the one of W union Z relative to L1. Just by adding this sigma to whatever we had in here. Right, so this is functorial under cobordisms. What else? It also decomposes, so what is the structure? It's um, a direct sum over i, j in z, and a relative homology class in, um, well, let me just say in h2 of wl, according to the, um, yeah, the relative homology class of the, um, of the surface, and then s, i, j, w, l, alpha. So, and I and J are the usual bi-gradings in Havana homology. All right, so what I want to talk about is uh, how to compute this. Can we compute it for anything else? And, um, yeah, so basically, um, well, if you want to compute something for four manifolds, you have to understand how it changes when you add handles. So, all of this talk is to say how to express SWL in terms of a handle body decomposition of W. Okay, and this is something I did for two handles. <coughs> it's joint work with my student, Ikshu Natalat from 2020. And then for one and three handles, it's uh, joint work with Walker and Bedrick. Um, okay, well, and for four handles, it's trivial, so, um, okay, four handles don't change. Right. For example, uh, this is easy to see, like S of S4 is still, um, By the way, when I don't mention, what, what, sorry, so I, this, in particular, I can do this invariant for closed four manifolds, and then the link has to be empty because there's nothing in the boundary. Okay, so let me state the, the results. I won't prove them. Let me start um, from the higher dimensions to the lower in increasing order of complexity. So three handles, theorem three. If I have a uh, W and some link and I attach a three handles, so that means that I have a sphere in here, an S2, and I attach some three handle, you know, and so originally I had a Y, and then now I have some new thing, some Y prime. Uh, right, then, well, um, so what happens? You can Well, 
you can look at the equator of a sphere, let's call it J, and push the two hemisphere inside the four manifold, let's call them now del plus, delta plus and delta minus. So the theorem says that S W L, uh, sorry, S W prime L, so W prime is W when I attach the, um, the three handle is S W L modulo the image of F, where F is psi of I times Y delta plus minus psi of I times Y delta minus. Yes. Yes. Um, no, so, um, well, if you're interested in W prime and it comes from something like this, then the, um, the co-core of this is one dimensional and it doesn't intersect the links generically. If you, if you think of it from like W prime to W. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, the goal is if you, ha you have a four manifold with, um, with like some handles and you want to express it in terms of something easier, so you can just choose like which way. You get different expressions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so just to make sure, so these are the cobordism maps corresponding to the upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere, and you take the difference and you get this, this relation. This is actually not too hard to prove. Yes. Oh, um, separating sphere. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Now, the two handle theorem, I mean, two handles are the main complication in four manifolds, so this is more interesting. So again, I have um, a link and I have some um, K, now it can, K, can, uh, K is another link where I attach, well, let's say a knot, and it can be linked with L, and I attach the two handle. So again, I go from some W to some W prime. So now the theorem is S W prime L is the direct sum over all R1 and R2 natural numbers S of W, L union K, R1, R2, modulo some equivalence relation. Um, yes, where, what is, this is a cable of K. So K is the attaching link for these two handles. And again, it can be linked with L, uh, where you have R1 thinks in one direction and R2 thinks in the other direction. So you have to understand kind of the Let's say you attach things to a ball, then you have to understand the Hovano homologies of all the cables of the attaching link. And then you have some, um, well, some equivalence relation. Maybe for reasons of time, I'll just say that this is given by some cobordism map between cables. Let me not write them down. But yes, basically, you have to understand the skin lasagna for the for W, for L union cables of K. All right, and finally for one handle, let me just um, maybe explain the simplest case. If I have one one handle uh, and I attach it to a ball, let's say I have S1 times C3, and I have some link in here. Um, okay, then I cut this along um, 
a B3. So the boundary is S2. Let's say the link, inter the link is in the boundary and it intersects it maybe in two key points. So I cut this open. I get just a B4 and I have this tangle. Yeah, let's call it R. So R is in, um, well, it's in S2 times I. It's in S3 minus two balls. So the scale lasagna of this thing, I'm just doing this example, but uh, I mean, you can generalize it to attaching one handles to anything. Uh, well, is some Hochschild homology of some category associated category of tangles um, associated to R. Let me just put it like this. So this is some direct sum over all tangles T with um, delta of T, the boundary being two key points of Havana homology of T union R union T bar modulo some equivalence relation. I won't get into that, but basically you have to look at all possible ways of closing this R with a tangle T and its um, mirror T bar. And yes, you get something like this. So in the end, in principle, basically you can decompose a four manifold into handles. And once you do all this, you reduce it to just Havana homology or like the skein lasagna inside B4. You just cut it until you get to B4 and then you get some Havana homologies over things that involve how you attach the one handles and the two handles and the three handles. Okay, so unfortunately, of course, the lower you go in dimension, the more complicated the description. Like here, you just divided by some map. Here, you had to take the direct sum over all possible cables. And here, you had to take the direct sum over all possible tangles and divide. So, all right, so it's some way of expressing um, the invariant in terms of uh, things, but uh, in terms of Havana homologies, of the ordinary Havana homologies, but it's a big direct sum modulo sum equivalence relation. So, still, let's see. So, what could we, what can we compute? using these, we can do some computations. For example, um, S of S1 times B3. So let's just look at one handles. And the simplest thing I can think of is S1 times two P points. So just two P uh, circles going around. Okay, I have to work with the coefficients in a field for some technical reasons. Well, this turns out to be K. So I have, yeah, so this involves some calculation of Hochschild homology. It's K when P equals zero. It's dimension four when P equals one. And it's infinite dimensional when P is greater or equal than two. Okay. Um, you can also look at S of S1 times S3. In this case, you get something, again, with the empty link in the boundary, because there's no boundary. You get one dimensional. You can look at S of S2 times B2. Um, let's say with, a, with the empty link. This uh, corresponds to attaching a two handle. So now as an application of theorem two, let's just attach a zero framed two handle along the unknot. Then I can then I can understand the cables of the unknot, the zero frame cables of the unknot. That's no problem, and I can compute this, and I get something. I get some polynomial ring in um, a zero and a zero inverse and a i uh, several i. Sorry, just one i, one i, one a, a, a one degree of um, A0 is 0, 0, and degree of A1 is 0 minus 2. Um, this is also infinite dimensional, but it's, uh, but 
I mean, it's like locally finite dimensional, meaning in each i, j, alpha. So recall that this decomposes according to i, j, alpha. And okay, in this case, uh, once you specify these things, it's finite dimensional. This is kind of bad that we got k infinity here. This is not locally uh, finite dimensional. Um, you know, I mean, we like we like the places where our invariants take values to be uh, to be finite dimensional, like the skein module was. But okay. Um, Yes. Uh, sorry, where? Where? Which one? Oh, because otherwise it doesn't bound anything. You want the yeah? You want it to bound something? <coughs> um, right. Okay. Well, there's some calculation for CP two. In homological degree zero only, I get that. Um, well, this is um, this is zero, and whereas for CP two bar, uh, I get that this is j equals zero and zero otherwise. So these are pretty different. Uh, this involves um, the two-handle theorem applied to the R not framed one. And that gives us, when you take the cables, you get some torus links. And we use something we know about the Kovano homology of torus links. Uh, you can also do C framed uh, uh, cables of the R naught. But kind of that's about it. In terms of Kovano homology, we would, it would be really nice to understand Kovano homology of cables for other knots if we want to do more calculations. All right, so, well, that's, uh, that's the theory, so let me um, give some open problems. So what, what can we do with this, and what should we try to do in the future? Um, well, okay, so what is it? Well, we don't know, but uh, one thing you can try is to define something similar for um, not clear homology. So my student, Darren Chen, um, he defined a skein lasagna using HFK. HFK has slightly different functoriality properties than Kovano homology, but you can prove a similar two-handle addition uh, theorem. But the challenge is, how is this related to the actual HFK uh, in so for natural homology, we have something in any three manifold. And you can pretend we don't and just start with S3. Well, and in simple examples, they're the same. But I don't know if they're going to be the same in general. Um, here's something that would be interesting. So this is an invariant of four manifolds. It's based on, let, let's, let's say we just look at closed four manifolds with the empty links. So does S of W detect exotic smooth structures on W? Well, it comes from Fovano homology, which can, de you know, which can be used to show that there are exotic structures on R4, so maybe there's some hope. Um, okay, some, some, other, some other hope is that, so this is a PQFT, and S of CP2 is different from S of CP2 bar. So this is the kind, I mean, this is something you definitely want to have to have a chance of, um, of detecting exotic smooth structures. There's a theorem that if you have a unitary PQFT where, um, the invariant of x is related to the one of x bar, then you, you don't have any hope of detecting exotic smooth structures. At least they're different, which makes sense because for one of homology, the maps on, on it are sensitive to orientation. 
but the real question is what happens for S2 times S2. So, you know, many, most exotic structures, um, I mean, exotic smooth structures become trivial after you connect some with enough S2 times S2s. So if you do this here, you can show that it's the tensor product of the two parts. So then you would like to, to compute this, and that, in, that would involve, um, well, it would involve uh, the hop link and cables of the hop link. So if someone could compute the Havano homology of cables of the hop link, then yes, then I would know if I should think about this or not. Uh, because if this is, uh, you know, if this is zero or infinite dimensional, then there's some hope. Uh, if it's not, if it's finite dimensional but non-zero, then there's no hope. Uh, because, right, I mean, if it's zero or infinite dimensional, then once you know this invariant, you cannot tell the invariant for it. So, I don't know. So they become, so then the invariance would be zero. No, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that it doesn't stabilize. I mean, it does stabilize, but maybe if it stabilizes by zero, then it would fine. Yeah, it doesn't matter, I mean, it, um, yeah, even, yeah, if you stabilize many times, then, you know, if this is zero, then, I, I don't know, you get zero. Okay, we can, oh, sorry. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk later. Um, so the, the final thing and the, maybe the most important thing is what Tom uh, asked in the beginning. So this is not quite the right thing. So it would be good, so here's the challenge, is to define S at the chain level and then take homology. Uh, so here we, we, we had elements in Kovanov homology rather than, the, rather than in chain Kovanov complex. And that's why, uh, for example, that's why I think we got something infinite dimensional there. So we can study this for, um, for let's say S1 times B3 and the link in the boundary, which is S1 times S2. Um, and then we know we saw that S times S1 times B3L can be infinite dimensional. It's not what we want. Like, Fleur homology, for example, is finite dimensional. Um, but the better version, the chain version, the expectation, I mean, you, uh, so re remember in this case, this was some Hochschild homology of some category. So you can now do a Hochschild homology of a different category, which is done at the chain level. And this is what Rosansky did. So this is, um, so Rosansky wrote a paper. Uh, you get Rosansky, Havano homology for links in S1 times S2. And this is, uh, this is locally finite dimensional. In every degree, it's finite dimensional. It may be infinite dimensional overall, but that's okay. So this tells us that, and this is a good theory, it's functorial, there's a Rasmussen invariant for it, and so on. And that's what, uh, yeah, so really, uh, it would be good to, the correct theory would be to define it at the chain level, and then I think this, this would have like nice properties, and well, the conjecture is that it would always be locally finite dimensional. But why can't we do that? Oh, and by the way, if you can define it, then there would be analogs of the theorems I stated for, for, handle, for handle additions. 
But the problem is that we need functoriality. Uh, well, and naturality to infinite order of of the chain Kovanov complexes, and that is not known. Yeah, what do I mean by this? So, if I have a surface, uh, then well, if I have a sequence of Rademeister moves, okay, I get a map between the chain complexes, but I want this up to homotopies and higher homotopies and everything to be just kind of depend on a contractible set of traces. Sorry, which one? No, I don't think it's, I mean, it's not known for uh, CFK either. Oh, it should do the instanton theory. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay. All right, we'll think about that. Okay. Well, okay. So there's, okay, so my, my collaborators like Paul Vedry have some ideas in this direction, so that's the challenge. So hopefully uh, later we'll get to something. But this is just, uh, yeah, some ideas. So I'll stop here. How, how does it behave under uh, stabilization with CP2 bar? It, it multiplies like this. I mean, it, it still tensors like this, yeah. Connected yeah, connected sum is always like that. Yes. Yes, and that's, uh, oh, so sorry, by the way, which one, uh, what am I doing here? This is, um, I forget. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, you know, I don't expect it to detect all exotic smooth structures, just some, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, like. So yeah, so connect some with this, presumably it's, it's fine. Connect some with this would just give you something zero, so it wouldn't detect anything if it's like that, yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, yeah, okay. So, 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 so Tom is saying that, you know, in, um, in cyborg Witten theory or in, uh, instanton, you, you use the mix map like plus minus rather than on hat. Yeah, uh, well, um, sure, I mean, I don't know. If the, the map on hat still detects exotic smooth structures on some manifolds with boundary. And you know, you have bar Natan theory, you can do this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is just, uh, you know just the simplest theory that we can compute at the moment, yeah. Oh, um, everything works, I mean, the theorems work, uh, the computations, are, I mean, I don't know how to compute it for CP2, like there's no, uh, yeah, we just don't know, like the cable, the SLM homology of cables, but of torus links that well. Sorry, say that again. Yes, yes.
<laughs> We're not there yet. Chain exactness? Oh, like like a, a long exact, an exact triangle? Yeah. Um, Yeah, probably not. Um, I mean, I don't know if it would satisfy it at the chain level either, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yes, 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 you can, you can get uh, exact triangles like that, yeah. 